Welcome to another episode of Talking With Kevin and Son. And today we're talking lights, camera, action, and American filmmaker, producer, living his dream. We have a very special guest. Our mission is to educate through the power of story, uplift through our voice, inspire, create experiences and perspectives using the framework of teaching and learning. Our purpose is hope, helping other people every single day. This episode of Talking with Kevin and Son is brought to you by RMK Productions and 10 United, the podcast network. Now, before we get started, I want you to kind of look back. We have such a genuine, um, gifted, kind person here as our guest. And I want you to kind of think about, you know, everything that you can possibly Google about a person, this young man is going to pop up. George Lee is the co-founder and CEO of VFX Powerhouse Ventures 3D and Storyscope Film. He's also received an award in 2011 for a Kore Korean Businessman of the Year. I think I've got that right. He's, yeah. also, he's also worked on projects that have the tag name Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, Lion Gate Films, Sony, and Nike. You may not know him by his face, but if I were to say that Men in Black 3, if I were to say uh, Armageddon, if I was to say The Rock, if I was to say Mulan, and last year he released a beautiful film during the Christmas holidays, his animated film, Animal Cracker, Crackers, I hope I said that right, which was directed by Tony Bancroft of Mulan, featuring Sly Stallone, Emily Burke, Sir Ivan Millane, I think I have that right, and Dan Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. McKellen. There you go. Yeah. And Danny um, DeVito. And today, George Lee, welcome to Talking with Kevin and Son, producer, legend, and hero <laughs> to us. Oh, come on. I I'm honored <laughs> to be I'm honored to be invited. <laughs> and I humbly, humbly, humbly say this because, you know, like those are very good movies that, you know, that, that we've done, you know, and uh, I'm very proud of it, of that, you know, but um, so there's more to build. You know, I feel that. Yeah, but um, thank you so much for inviting me, gentlemen. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Hey, George, I am going to ask you something that probably no one has ever asked you. And if I, and they have, then I'm no longer original. I'm a copy of this conversation. Do I have to call my mom? Yeah, you probably, you probably do, because that, that's what I'm going to ask you. You know, you, you're married. You're a husband. You're a father. You're an uncle. Um, you're a brother your friend, you know, to David and some other people, if your grandkids were looking back and this video was part of a time capsule and they were talking about Grandpa George Lee, what would be the story that you want to leave to your, your legacy of how you got into this film business, how you started your career? Where would you begin? I started this career at a very young age in, in, in middle school. It's hard to believe, right? My father was one of the biggest um, distributor for South Korea for foreign films, you know, uh, Hollywood films. And thing was, he was also the, uh, he started with a head of censorship down in Korea. But when we moved over here, I was five years old from Korea. We moved over here. And when my father was appointed, this is when there's no big, big, um, you know, cineplexes, you know, in Korea. They were little, you know, they're just movie theaters in the 70s. You know, um, my father couldn't speak English. So what I did for my dad in middle school is I used to read the scripts, the synopsis, you know, and I would translate for him. And he would take me to these big, big meetings out at Warner Brothers and Paramount and all that. And I was just excited to see this lot, Universal. I mean, as a kid, what, I mean, that was just, just it wasn't even a job. It was just like I was helping my father. So then I got into the love of, 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 of watching film, you know. And so if my grandkids, you know, watches, I, I, it, it is a generation you know, from my father down to me. And this is why I love making films because I could leave like this video of a podcast. You know, I could leave my movies for my grandkids to watch and say, hey, my grandpa did that. 
you know, and said, you know, and, and just down down the line of generations, you know, of, of my family, you know, that wow, I mean, he actually did make films, which is the most difficult thing to do in this town, you know, because everyone runs around saying, you know, I'm making a movie, but are they really making a movie? You know, it's hard. It's really hard work. And so I would leave that legacy is that I would make good films that, you know, that they would continue to watch. Like I watch Kevin and Theo, you watch some older movies like, 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 you know, A Wonderful Life or Christmas, you know, and, and, and things like that. You say, wow, if somebody made that movie, right? Somebody made that movie and that person is not alive anymore. But things we continuously watch it because it's become part of our life. Okay, just uh, touch on what you, something you said there. Um, as a middle schooler, because I know like there were some places my dad would take me as a kid, and I never really understood the scope of where I was at or like who the people I were meeting were. Like during these meetings and with all these big companies, did you really understand what was like going on no. there? Like, how big it really was. That's a great question, Theo, because my father would kick me out <laughs> of the office when the deal was being made. Goes, Can you step outside in okay. Korean? And every executive knew that. They're like, okay, this is time to cut the deal, right? To buy the movie, right? So yeah. I would always like, you know, so I was actually, all the uh, executive secretaries and assistants loved me because, you know, I'd be the kid you know, waiting outside, you know, yeah. and I'd, be, I'd be talking to them. It was fun. That's why I learned the trades and, and, and began to love film. Okay. You know, my first film I've ever saw was, uh, here was Jaws. Okay. You know, I was horrified as a kid. Yeah. You know, the second movie I saw, I'm not kidding you, is uh, me and my best friend snuck in to, uh, to go watch The Exorcist. And I couldn't sleep for three months. <laughs> <laughs> I was like horrified. <laughs> you know, I mean, if anybody's ever seen that movie, The Original Exorcist, you're not going to be able to sleep for three months if you're an adult. <laughs> and they must have uh, stuck with you. Now, now you're making horror films for a living. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it, you know. George, any of your um, children following your footsteps and any advice you're, you're giving them? I have three lovely kids, 26, 24, and a 22-year-old. 26-year-old took my other side of, you know, the business side. So he's in business, you know, finance. My middle child, my daughter, is took a, you know, kind of the, the mother's route and said, you know, I, I love I love children. So she's she graduated from Cal and uh, she... Um, She's going you know, to grad school to be a teacher. My youngest one is the one who follows me right now. She's graduating this year at USC Film School, which is a very prestigious film school. And um, she has the eye, you know, she has the eye. And, um, but she doesn't want to work with dad yet. She wants to prove herself, which is fine. I, I think that's what it should be, you know. And um, she doesn't want me to open up any doors for her or anything like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of people that are, that are going to tune in to this and they're going to listen, says a real life film producer. Um, and I, I know when I was coming up, um, going from uh, organized sports to, you know, being introduced to the real world, I, I walked into the entertainment field by accident. Two weeks uh, into being in New York, um, I was on a soap opera. I had no acting experience other than singing in, in, in plays which this weekend I just sung at a wedding. It's the first time my son ever heard me sing. So um, you know. <laughs> I, I'm sure he has some good fights. I, I was tell. impressed. I was surprised. Yeah. I, wanted to make, I wanted to give him a hard time, but it, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> but, I had no idea. <laughs> I, I, hey, don't, be going, don't be going to American Idol and stuff like that, Kevin. <laughs> I, I, I am not going into American Idol, you know. Um, I, I, I have um, dreams to do some, something else with, with, with my voice, kind of re replaying a, um, uh, a version of some R&B singer that has fallen on his hard times and, you know, living under a bridge in New York and, you know, him singing tunes at night in the middle of the night and people walking by. And, and then all of a sudden you flash back to um, his story of how he came to be and how he was in the group. So, but anyway, going back to um, that I, I know the difference between relationships in Hollywood and re relationships on the East Coast. Everyone and er any, anyone always has a script. Everyone, yeah. always, everyone wants to be a producer, but we all also know producers deliver. Producers don't have conversations. Um, how does someone get a script to you? 
Well, let me give you the, um, the, 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 the most recent movie that I just, you know, wrapped. Uh, it's called The Accursed. And I do once a year up in Toronto called the Trump, Toronto Movie Expo. And I've been living for three years. I'm part owner of that. And I bring all my Hollywood friends. I'm, I'm, I bridge north and south. You know, so south is Hollywood. North is Toronto's Hollywood. You know, and I bring, you know, the best directors and, you know, I keynote, you know, speakers and I put this whole thing together where it's, you know, a cinematographer, an editor, you know, a director, some talents, you know, a female empowerment type, you know. And now I, at the end, I, 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 I do what you call a pitch deal, you know, and a lot of these writers pitch me, you know, and I don't give out my email address because I get bombarded with this. So I give them my LinkedIn LinkedIn address and you know I kind of like go there and say hey this kind of interesting you know and the accursed came that way through my LinkedIn which is crazy you know and I read the script for some reason I don't read all the scripts on there because it will take too much time you know and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pass a couple on and thing is a couple on to my uh, partners and you read this I'll read that and the accursed it's just somehow just I, I was drawn to it and I read it literally in two hours, and I go, oh, my God, the script is one of the greatest scripts I've ever read, horror movie. I literally was scared reading the movie. So I sent it to my, I, I sent it to my director, Kevin Lewis, who um, I've been friends with over a decade. And he just got off a movie called Willie's Wonderland with Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did, did really well. It was like a cult movie, you know, and the, and the investors made like five times their money. It was crazy. And I go, Kevin, I have a movie for you. I want you to read it. He calls me back literally in four hours after I sent him the script. He goes, I love this. This is like James Wan and Sam Raimi having a, you know, having, having a, a nephew. Right? So it was like crazy. You know, these horror directors. So that started in May, guys. And I ended up finishing shooting that movie in five months. We cast it two and a half weeks. It was that fast. I never, I never experienced this in my life. It usually takes about a year to develop, blah, 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 blah. Five months, boom, I paid for the script, boom, I went to the casting director, boom, we casted the, you know, the, 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 the cast, boom, I'm, I'm, next thing I'm in Savannah, Georgia, shooting <laughs> a movie. I'm like, oh my God, how does this even happen? It's surreal. It really was surreal. Yeah, it's amazing. Could you, could you um, tell us a little bit more about your upcoming film, A Curse? Yeah, it's uh, it's fantastic because you know it's a, the genre, the horror genre. I don't need a big, 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 big movie star. It sells itself, you know. And that's why the mm -hmm. horrors are usually a smaller budget, you know. And what I did was uh, we we did a very clever job casting. I I casted two young ladies named Sarah Gray and Sarah Demont. Sarah Gray is a lead in a Netflix show called The Order, you know, mm -hmm. and. She was the lead. I said, I knew I was going to get the younger audience, right? And I got Meg Foster, who was a legend, you know, in the horror genre. You know, everyone follows her. She goes to the Comic Cons and she does the signatures and signs, all that, because people know her. Then I had to round that with one, one name that people might, older generation might recognize, and that was Mina Savari, because she was in American Beauty and American Pie, yep. you know? So... To me, and then I, I then I capped it off with Alexis Knapp, who was the um, in Pitch Perfect. You know, so it was. I didn't have a big movie. I didn't have a Scarlett Johansson. I, I didn't have a Charlize Theron. I, I didn't need them. The, the genre sold itself. So I shot this in Savannah, and I'll tell you, I shot it in Savannah is because I did some research. Savannah is the most haunted place in the United States. Okay, that would that makes that that sounds like it sounds right. Sounds yeah, like it makes some sense. Yeah, it's, it's in a historical district there where twenty thousand people are buried. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I've experienced supernatural things while shooting this movie because it was the most scariest place. I shot at this. I shot at this house. We call it the Gamble House because that's what the you know, that's what the name was. Okay. Um, on the third floor. On the third floor, there's three little kids living up there and how I knew that because the next house was rented by an Airbnb a family who came there paranormal activity chasers I mean they're oh. ghostbusters they show me the equipment and stuff because and they, <laughs> the father goes he's that third floor up there there's three young kids up there 
and uh, we became friends with the 80 year old. Her name was eight, eight year old. Her name's Molly. Molly lives up. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So we're shooting this for in six days because that was the location during that time. And then thing is, after that, we shot six days. I put all my PAs as Airbnb to live there. Right. Because okay. we, have to, we have to save money. We have to be on a budget. You know? Yeah, yeah. And we got Send to to the deal. haunted place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I didn't know that was, I mean, come on, was that, we, we believe this haunted, whatever. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, yeah, one yeah. of those things, right? So one of the PA, <laughs> the other three was going to join him the next day. He had to sleep there by himself one night. And he heard all this ragged kids like speaking and footsteps. He, he actually came out of the house at four in the morning with his pillow and she slept in the cargo van. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. You know, with Lawrence, and Lawrence was like, George, you have no idea. People are living up there. I go, what are you talking about? You know, I'm like, yeah, there, there, there's definitely ghosts there. And I'm like, well, just be friends with them. They, don't, they won't hurt you. Yeah, at least be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you literally had ghosts crashing your set. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Yes. Now, SAG and APTRA, do they, are they aware of that? Yeah, I just, what are you gonna, what is he going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have some ghosts here. Wait, wait, you want commission on the ghosts? <laughs> 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 but that, yeah, it was the most scariest yeah, place in the United States. I, I researched that, and I said, this is the place we want to shoot. Not a lot of me, like, Georgia has a great tax rebate. That's one of the reasons I shot there. <laughs> you know, they give you 30% back. You know, but um, it was this Savannah was like the the oak trees have the Spanish moss. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just really creepy looking. You know, and I like, this is the place we want to shoot. Now, going back to you know your your cast, and I know you you hired a casting agency, and is the the writer the original script writer, or did you bring someone on to um actually do the screen? No, it was interesting because so the writers live in Ireland. The Kennedy brothers, Rob and Ed Kennedy. So Rob, Rob is the you know, the writer on this one here. And it's, it's just funny you asking that because Ed's the one who pitched his brother script with his script. I ended up taking his brother's script. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I feel so guilty because his other script was like, you know, it, it was a mystery thriller where a, a parrot, you know, saw a murder. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make that movie, you know, but okay, yeah. No, no, because he, I mean, it was a great, he was a, they're both great writers, but it wasn't mm -hmm. the genre for me. I mm -hmm. like supernatural, demonic, you know, that type of, you know, uh, um, story, right? Like The Exorcist. That's probably why right. <laughs> I yeah. gravitate because I watched The Exorcist when I was eight, right? But the thing is, um, they lived in the island. And the thing is, they were going to, Rob was going to come and join us on the set, but COVID, we didn't open up. Yeah. So COVID was a big problem. So, you know, uh, he was really bummed up, but he actually, um, we're always every day, you know, polishing up the script together with him. So he was very uh, involved, you know, with okay. the whole process. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm going to say this to um, my our, our listeners, especially our, our young cr creators. In the event that you have have a dream, do not take your competition to the show where dreams come true. Because what happens is you you just remove yourself from your own dream. That that happened to me with 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 acting. Um, I went to support a friend um, that was auditioning for a part. They asked me, was I auditioning? I said, no. They asked me to read for it. I got the job. He didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's writing, uh, his brother is writing me another script because he knows the taste of what I want to do. And I set up this company. The company is called Storyscope and Films. I've done all my movies under that banner. And then Venture 3D was the VFX and the 3D movies I had done. Uh, me, <clears throat> my partner Mark has been partners for 20 years, you know, in this business, which is rare because everyone kind of stabs everybody in the back in this business, you know. But Marcus and I, and then Kevin, who directed Occurs, three of us set up a company called Blood Red Films. So that's all our horror, elevated horror, and, and, and you know, the thriller will go under that banner. So this is not the last horror movie you're going to make. Oh, I'm setting one out right now in November down in a, in a place called Thomasville, Georgia. I was invited out there right after the movie by the folks, this lovely folks down there. They, they've done six movies and they love our business model. They said, let's just set up another. And my next movie is going to be called The Oak, The Oak Tree, Oak. It's a, 
it's a, 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 a crossover between Final Destination meets uh, The Ring. Okay. Go ahead, Theo. Looking forward to see that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to making it. It's going to be good. I have a director. He's fantastic. His name is Shane Drake. And uh, he does all the music videos down in Tennessee for like Carrie Underwood and Tim McGraw and all that. And this is his first feature. He's all excited, too. Okay. So uh, it seems like so I, I over this past summer, I went to, down to Georgia for the first time. And mm-hmm. me and my fiance did not do well with the heat down there it was a little oh, bit horrible, much yeah. so i couldn't imagine what it's like working on a set i just wanted to see if you could open up a little bit about what it's like really like working on a movie set and putting together these big feature films so yeah i started off you guys i, I told you guys about you know google george lee and this mm-hmm. is this is like literally like serendipity it really is so what i did was you know i i built a set of the interior of the house i rented a church I rented a church with a gymnasium and, you know, and a school. So I used the school as a, as a production office and I built the interior of the set inside the gymnasium. So I had this huge fans there, you know, to, to, to cool off, you know, for the, for, okay. for the crew, right. But then yes, yeah, guess who owns that church? Hmm. Oh, Pastor George Lee. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It, it just, it gets better. So, I have this stunt, and, and you know, my PA comes to me all flustered because this shot was, we have to shoot this on, on Monday, or it was Monday. He comes to me Saturday, and he's like, I can't find a car, you know, because they're going to do a T-bone stunt, you know, with this car. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, I have a budget for $3,000. I got to go buy this car that we're going to wreck. And I'm like, he's like literally in tears. I go, hop in my car. So I drive. I drive over the bridge to South Carolina, right? <laughs> like a used car dealer, right? It's like it's like that movie with Kurt Russell, used car. Like, how you doing, sir? And coming out with a cowboy hat on. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you just can't get better than this, right? So I'm like, I'm looking for a car for my uh, for my daughter who's going to move over to Savannah, and you know, I always have the budget is fifteen hundred dollars, right? So I'm trying to save money. He shows me this this like seventy eight Buick, right? Seventy eight Buick. I'm like. Oh, the air conditioner's not working. So I, I tack off another five hundred, just doing my producing <laughs> job, right? So I buy this car for a thousand bucks. And I tell my assistant, get it, get in that car. You know, I'll follow you, man, just in case something does happen, right? I'll, I'll be, I'll be right behind you. Don't worry. So we bring it right before I bought the car. They're like, "Do you have a Georgia address?" And I'm just like, "Oh, George Lee, the church." Okay, <laughs> I have a Georgia address. <laughs> I ended up giving the Georgia address to the church with my driver's license. They all checked out. And oh I, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, like, we, 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 we donated the card to the church, you know, after we, uh, so, 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 so they can keep the money, you know, and thing is, I'm thinking, the pastor's wife, I'm thinking, why are you buying another car? <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. You probably got him in trouble that night. <laughs> uh, but I did tell him. I go, I had to buy a car with your address. And he goes, yeah, because your name, same name as mine. And it was, like, so funny. It was, like, I saw a huge sign in the front. It was Pastor George Lee, the lead pastor. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> this, is, this can't get any better. <laughs> hey, yeah, it sounded like it worked out perfect for you. <laughs> yeah. And now, now, George. Yes. Th- this movie. It is something special because most ho- horror movies um, always have a male, male lead. You have a predominantly female cast. Um, the motivation behind that. And can you tell me about each of the characters um, and their, their parts in it? Because honestly, Theo and I both have our fingers crossed that we're going to get a chance to, to, to have a conversation with each of those um, um, stars before your movie comes out. So can you can you break it down why you pick these people and and the roles that they they play in the movie? Yeah, it, it's very rare where you know I have five female leads. You know, I had two. I, I see actually three gentlemen in the in the movie, which was Sherman um, Augustus, who's a dear friend of mine. He just came on board just to have fun with me. He's coming up of a show called Stranger Things, which Sherman would love to do a podcast probably if I ask him to do it. So Sherman it was in, remember the show AMC Into the Badlands? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he was the number two guy next to Daniel. So he was one of the leads. You know, so Sherman is a, a very, uh, you know, very, very talented actor. He just came on board. And the other two gentlemen, right, is, one was the, uh, I saw him on a, um, 
on, on, on uh, with Simon, you know, the not America's uh, America's Got Talent, AGT. Yeah, and he's he's a contortionist. Oh, I know but, him. Yeah, Troy James. Yeah. So I, I got him to do play the demon, right? And he's um, doing some wicked stuff, you know. His, his body's every bone in his body's double jointed, wow. right? Mm. I got Troy, and then the third gentleman was Johnny Land out of a day player. But the leads were, you know, uh, I had the both Sarahs, Sarah Dumont and Sarah Gray. You know, they played Beth and Ellie. And the whole story is because Ellie uh, comes back because her mother commits suicide, right? Commits suicide for the funeral you know, to, to wrap up everything. But she's a uh, she's a, a volunteer, you know, down in Haiti for you know for the for the uh, the, the, the the rescue, right? And Sarah DeMond's her best friend, you know, Beth, you know. And what happened in the past is, you know, uh, Mir uh, Mina Savari's role, her name is Alma on this, you know, and, you know, not to give away too much of the story, you know, she is, you know, uh, Miss Ambrose, which is played by Meg Foster's daughter. Miss Ambrose is, is in a coma. What happens is there's, there's a demon who, who needs to find a host, a body. And Mrs. Ambrose is the demon. But she's dying. She's in a coma. So uh, Alma's character is trying to find a new body for the for the demon, which is Sarah's, Sarah Gray's character. You know, so that's why she comes back and, you know, she's, Mina Savari puts out an ad saying, you know, I, I need a caretaker for my mom, you know, which is in the cabin, you know, which 30 years ago or 40 years ago prior to that, you know, there was a big event that happened over there between Sarah Gray's mom mm -hmm. and her father. And the, and the demons. So I, I don't want to go too much into detail because I don't want to give it away, but, you know, um, it's finding a host. You know, the, the demon's looking for a young female host who's very, you know, very, very naive, humble, whatever it was, a nice mm -hmm. spot to be in. Well, I, I will tell you, here in Pennsylvania, we have a, what is it, Penhurst? Yeah, um, Penhurst. Penhurst, which is technically haunted. If you actually want to do a screening, Pen Penhurst is haunted. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> like, not technically, it's haunted. <laughs> but anyway, I think it'd be cool to do your premiere um, in, in there. Um, I'd love to do something out there because also what I'm doing right now is I'm talking to the uh, Hollywood Forever Cemetery, which they do the uh, movie screenings over there. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to also do one over there too. Hollywood, you know, where, you know, Ramones and, you know, Toto. Well, you mm -hmm. know, from, from you Wizard of Oz is very there, you know, uh, Mickey Rooney, all the big stars. Well, but I would love to just, you know, I'll, I'll look into Pinners, you know, something we could do in Pennsylvania for the East Coast people. It'll be great. Yep. Yes. Yep. Well, spe speaking of the premiere, when do we, when do we expect the premiere date to be? Well, usually I, I, everything's in the bin right now. We're cutting a two okay. minute trailer, promo trailer for AFM, American Film Market in November. Uh, usually it takes about six months, you know, mm -hmm. to, to edit. You know, I'll have a director's cut, you know, uh, probably in December. But the thing is, I got to put the VFX, you know, the effects in there, which takes about six months. I would love to, depending on the summer and the distributor who we pick, I would love to have this, you know, released in summer. And then, or if not, it'll be fall. It really depends because I think this has legs to be a theatrical release. But mm -hmm. thing is, if Netflix, you know, gives me an offer I can't refuse, yeah, then I, gotta, I, I, I'll go to I'll go to the streamers. Well, you, you always have to look at um, RMK Productions. We have a home for you, the team. You know, I both Theo and I, our bags are packed for the premiere. No matter East Coast, West Coast, we're ready for you. Oh, you guys are both invited. Definitely invited. You're on my list. Now we have a lot of young people that are dreamers that are going to be listening to this. We have a lot of people that have scripts in their hands and says, how do we get to George Lee and whatever, what I would like for you to do. All right. If someone's to ask you what your big ask for. And I always say when, when we do this, ask big. Um, and I know how you feel about leaving a legacy. Can you tell us in George's wildest of dreams, if he had one thing that would come true, what would your ask be? Uh, I mean, look, we have a lot of young, uh, aspiring, you know, um, talents, you know, coming up. You know, it doesn't matter what race, what, you know, female, male, it doesn't matter. I, I believe in talent. I really believe in talent. And, and I like to see, you know, I like, I love working with younger, younger, you know, younger people. I mean, they, you know, I was, I stole this one on the set, you know, they're calling me Papa George. I was like, come right. on, get off of that, right? But, 
you know, one thing I would love to do is to work with um, with my daughter, to be honest with you. That's one of my ask. you know, uh, when she's ready, you know, I would love to produce one of her movies that she directs, you know, that, that will go to a big screen. Not, you know, not just something, you know, short or anything like that when it's ready. Uh, and then I feel like I've done something with, you know, with one, with, with, with a, somebody in my bloodline too, you know, that we did this together, father and daughter, you know. Um, for the younger generation, you know, I, what I would probably tell them is keep, don't give up. This is a tough business, but don't give up. Don't give up your dreams. Don't tell people say, don't, don't, don't let people say no. It's okay. No's are fine. There's maybe's that I don't like. Okay, yeah. there's always a yes or a no, and there's a line between that, you know. So don't give up, you know. Don't don't d- don't just because someone said no, like I say, you know, don't don't give up. Thing is, just practice your skills, whether you're a writer, or a director, or even an actor, you know, or, or, or a cinematographer. You know, there's always new technologies and new 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 events. You know, schools. Just don't give. Just keep practicing. You know, we, we all have tools, sharpen your tools, you know, and, and get acclimated with, you know, with the right people, not the wrong people in this business. Yep. Iron, do, iron does sharpen iron. Um, George, uh, I, I know you're going to be inundated with um, conversations of um, how to attach uh, reality to a dream. How do, how do people reach you? Uh, you know, I, I would love them to follow the movie, first of all. Uh, we're on Instagram, hashtag uh, the accursed movie, all one word, T H E accursed, A C C U R S C D movie, hashtag the accursed movie. We're on Facebook, the accursed movie. Uh, we're also on Twitter, you know, at you know, the accursed movie, but without an E, this M O B I. Um, I would love them to reach me out there through, through my LinkedIn if they can. You know, I, I, I just don't give out my email addresses right now because I do get a lot of people, you know. And I have my website, you know, uh, stereoscopicfilms.com. www.stereoscopicfilms is plural. Stereo, put an O between the story and scopic, stereoscopicfilms.com. You know, and you can reach me there through there because you know, I'll be my emails there. Um, and what would be the last words? Because we're, we're going to put this in a time capsule to um your your wife your your children and your grandchildren what what would george lee the the man and the person person that we should know what would you say to them leaving this to them i i I humbly say you know thank you very much for uh, you know all my family support you know um this is a this is a, a business where you know it's hard to get support from your family because there's so many, you know, broken dreams and broken hearts in this business, you know. And I thank, you know, uh, I thank my family. I do. I thank them for believing in me that, that I could I could live my dreams, you know. Um, look, uh, you kept saying my wife. I, I mean, uh, I, I've been divorced for many years, Kevin. Right. You know, and I, you know, I live by myself. But the thing is, I think she knew that this was my dream and she supported me to, you know, to go live my dream. You know, because, you know, she didn't want me to, she wanted me to be a, a, a businessman, you know, a nine to five job, you know, so I have to really thank her for letting me do this, you know, and, and, you know, there's hardship, you know, there's sacrifices, you know, so we all, it's a, it's a trade-off to me, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, um, I still, I, I still love my family. I still love my ex-wife and she's great, you know, and, you know, we raised a wonderful family together and I just thank them that they, they, they believe in me that I could do this and I have the opportunity to do this. And one good thing I want to just leave off is people stay healthy. You can't do this if you're not healthy. So, you know, go take your vitamins, go do your walks, go, go work out. You know, we know that, Kevin, you're an athlete, you know. Right. So, yeah, I think mental, mental health, mental health and physical health is very important. When you do these kind of things, you know, so you know, you, you, that's a lot of people put, don't put that as a priority. I do, you know. So I, I probably leave that and just uh, I'm, I'm a very blessed person, and I thank the Lord. I really do, you know. That I'm, I'm able to do this day in and day out. Well, 
We have covered a lot of information for those that you're aspiring to do more with your life and to live out your dream as a creative um, person, creating content and, and becoming a professional storyteller. My friend, my brother, Mr. George Lee has outlined not only the obstacles that are in the way. And for those of you guys who are watching, there's some visual op obstacles that are always in, in, in our way in dealing with this business. We don't have to explain but also there's some emotional obstacles that sometimes either propel us to be stronger and push us closer to our goals or shackle us to someone else's dreams and never allowing our, our, our dreams to have a life of its own. But I, you know, listen to, to George, his message. Don't give up. Stay true to your dream. The door is always open. You're three feet away from where you want to be, your one turn of a key to open up that door to where your dreams can come true. So write, record, film, dream. And again, I want you to reach out to, to George at his Instagram account. What is that, George? Uh, the, 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 the movie is uh, hashtag the accursed movie. Yeah, I'm on there too. Uh, my Instagram, my daughter set, set it up. I'm not a big Instagram guy, but my daughter set it up. Uh, it's called, uh, give me one second. Let me, I'll tell you. Uh, it's hashtag, it, <laughs> it's your boy George. The boy is B O I, not B O I. It's, it's your boy George. I T S Y O B O I George. Hashtag. <laughs> my daughter set that up. <laughs> All right. You're I mean, a very interesting movie. Also, um, you might know him. It's a true story about a. Uh, it's called International Sweethearts, and it's a jazz musical I'm doing with Reggie Hudlin. Uh, and um, it's, it's 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 a true story about this you know uh, ladies who 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 had this jazz man when all their husbands and fiancés they all went to fight a war, the World War Two. And it's a, it's a true, it's, inter, it's called International Sweetheart. I'm doing with uh, Patriot Pictures also, which is very interesting. So I, I just don't want to focus on the horror, you know, but I, I, I love dabbing into you know, many different genres, you know. But, um, but right now, mainly I am setting up horrors right now for the next two years. George, I, I, I will tell you, and I, I say this, my circle of friends have a higher call to, to action um than most people we we don't stand on the sidelines and, and watch an accident we pull over to help george lee a personal friend a professional the ultimate professional um one of the most kind and generous people that uh, i have ever met he is always there people that follow us on talking with kevin and son are also like-minded people um if you want to get into the the, the movie business or want to be able to finance a film and, you know, you can always call, um, you know, reach out to George through his social media. Um, you've got young people that, that want to stream their movies. RMK Productions is open for that. But, you know, like I said, we, we've talked about a lot of things, George, you and your friends are always welcome. You know, I can always tell when we've done, done a job well, when someone connected to you is sitting in, in the chair telling their story, because we're all about people you should know that are making a difference. So for my listeners, if you liked what you heard and you're interested and you stay interested, please follow, subscribe, go to our YouTube page, which is RMK Productions and Network, or email us at infoRMKProduction.net. George, we appreciate you, and I hope you will come back if we can do anything going forward for you, for any member of your cast, whatever project that they're, they're working on, um, we're, we're all, all in. And to my, my listeners, I, I will say to you, all right, you're only as close as your last no. That's right. Thank you, George Lee.